That's a big boat. Yeah, the big boat took the dock. And now we're there. Checked out. It's really easy. It took like half an hour. But we've had to wait for the immigration to get here because you have to check out with customs and immigration and sometimes health too, but we didn't have to do that there. So yeah, now we head to Tailey and we go sailing. Those who have joined our story here, hi, we're Becca and Zach. We bought our boat Tailey last March after saving for years and after six months of figuring it all out in the UK, oh, we ditched the lines and really started the adventure. So come along with us for the highs, the lows and absolutely everything in between because we're not just doing it. We're bloody doing it. Right, we are out of here, off to Curacao. Bonaire has been wicked, so thank you, Bonaire. And yeah, thank you everyone who's made our stay here. It's so amazing, but yeah, we're gonna miss this place, but I'm sure we'll be back at some point, but time to get all these off and head out. It's 36 miles there, so we'll get in by this afternoon, which would be really nice. Okay, we're off. already literally let go of the mooring and we're sailing it feels really good got a bit of a windier day today but it's okay we'll get there fast we actually are on a bit of a time limit once again it's 9 30 at the moment and we well we've said that we're going to check in tomorrow but we need to get to spanish water the narrow rocky channel in the daylight because it's yeah Ideally, narrow and no later than six yeah no later than six really because we've done which we should do we've happy. still got an anchor and yeah should be fine, but um, we're on a little bit of a time limit. We really wanted to go to Klein Curacao. If we get there really quick, we might still be able to. It's a small island between the Bonaire and Curacao. Got cool shipwrecks on it, but timing wise, you can't stay there overnight only for two hours on a buoy. So timing wise, I think it's gonna be a bit hard to do, but we'll see, we might still manage it. Taylor might be on a fast, her fast legs today. <laughs> Yeah, I don't like looking at it at the moment, and we're like still shut up by the island. We're well over five, so yeah, it's, like six knots consistently at the moment. Yeah, that's cool. So we should get there pretty quick. Nice. Once we'd sailed past Climb on Air, we changed course and set our sails towards Curacao. With the wind dead behind us, we whacked out our trusty whisker pole. before performing the art that is jiving the head sail through the one foot gap between our new dual four stays. Right, can you pay that out to me in a sec? Okay, yeah, pay. Let it go completely. Oh yeah, it's coming. having a very fun sail. We've got the music on. We're just driving out to all the oh it's hot. Just driving out to all the old classics we used to listen to. Classics. All common classics actually. But yeah, we're we're doing good. We can see both islands which is nice. Um pretty toasty out there. My face is sweaty. I wonder question for you guys Obviously, I'd say we're re reasonably acclimatised to the warm weather. We've been, I mean, in warm weather since at least like eight, nine months. I'd say we're acclimatised, but we still get sweaty. 
locals don't. At what point do you have to be acclimatised enough to not get like this? <laughs> because I want to know. <laughs> anyway, we have some leftovers from yesterday. Fish tacos. I'm surprised I'm not falling over right now. But, oh no. The salt fell in the yogurt. We were advised to contact the Spanish Water Coast Guard before arriving to the island, as they were meant to advise us where to anchor. However, it's a Sunday evening, so let's see how this goes. Spanish Water Harbour Master, this is Tulu, over. Spanish Water Harbour Master, this is sailing vessel Tulu, over. Okay, I've done it three times, so not That's as long. Right, we'll just we'll pull them over in there. We don't get a response, we can anchor wherever we I know, it literally went right in front. I know. Just keep going along there. With rocks to our port and shallow reef to our starboard, it was time to focus up as we motored the narrow channel into Spanish water. This spot, however, is notoriously busy. It's super protected from the consistent strong trade winds. And aside from the 25 US dollar permit to anchor and strict anchoring zones, it's a great place to find yourself during hurricane season. Therefore, finding a tailie size gap may be a bit of a challenge. That was long. That was really long. <sighs> well, we have anchored. It's, what well, I don't even know the time, like six? No, maybe not quite, almost. It's been a few hours. <laughs> and we anchored- 10 to, Ten to six. We anchored at 4.30. We dropped anchor here originally, the spot we're in, and then by the time we paid out enough chain, we were too close to people. There was one annoying mooring or crab port or something ahead of us. So, yeah. Anyway, we went around, dropped in like three different places, and then didn't like the places um, because they were too close to the channel. And boats fly through like twenty knots on boats. And then we went in another spot, but we by the time the channel was so narrow, by the time we dropped the anchor and paid back the amount of chain we wanted for the higher winds. We were near the rocks, so anyway, we come back to the space and we've dropped by a mooring. I don't know if it's a mooring, it's some kind of ball. It doesn't look like it has anything on it. I don't know, I don't care. We dropped by and paid back. If someone tells us to move, fine, we will move. The next morning we headed into the main city, Willemstead, in order to check into the country. Hello. Can we just have two tickets into the town? Um, the pool and two dollars here. Two dollars. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So we made it into the city. Now we're just going to try and find immigration and customs and port authority. Not the easiest thing. Well, okay. Definitely not. But it looks pretty. We just were saying on the bus how it seems like this place has a bit of an identity crisis. It's Dutch, South American, South American, American. and American and Caribbean. There's literally a moving bridge 
But instead of lifting up and down, like in the UK, it's on a motor. You're stopping it's going to come back down. And the people are on it. <laughs> it's, it's driven by motors though, which is super weird. Yeah. It's literally just big props there. There's so much swirl. I don't know if you can see on camera, but there's so much swirl coming in. You can see in. the whole bridge moving. It's all on one team. Waves like coming into this channel. No wonder they say it's not suitable for smaller yachts. What do you think if I overshoot it? Lined up. If the swell, fair enough. Well, that was pretty cool to watch. But for this boat here, they just arrived. It's too only late. Half an hour. They do it. But people so, actually get stuck on the bridge as well because there's a gate on the other side that closes. Oh, so you have to just wait. And obviously, there's a gap when it opens. Yeah. You just get stuck in the bridge. Yeah. yeah. They're giving up. Maybe they're going to Spanish Water now yeah. instead. After marveling at the bridge for far too long, we went to actually check in. For reference, this is the immigration office, this is customs, this is the anchor permit place. You have to go from immigration to customs, then to get your anchor permit. Convenient, not. <laughs> this is all very strange. We just had to show our passports to a woman that's through a barrier. So what are the chances? Immigration there has conveniently moved to the other side of the river two weeks ago. So we got there and the hub master's there, asked for a permit. Have you checked in? No. Okay, go back to the side, check in, come back here. Everywhere online though, it says you've got to come here first. Then. Everywhere says don't mess up, go here first, then there, then here. Oh well. Talk to me about that. Oh. <laughs> well, the process in there wasn't too bad, but this whole area is just, it's also the, the old dockyard, but they still use it a bit, but it's just, yeah. It's, Thought we were gonna get murdered in there. Yeah, this whole place is like, <laughs> I don't know, it's seen better days, I think. For sure. Okay, but now we're checked in, so now we need to walk the 25 minute back across to the floating bridge to the harbour master and pick up an anchoring permit. Okay. And then, then we're done. Oh, I look a bit windswept and soaked. But we just got back. It was a, I don't know, 20, 30 minute drive in a mini bus. Uh, it ended up being like $2 each. It was so cheap. The bus was a dollar each for the way there and the mini bus. It was pretty much a taxi because it was just us and one other woman. We hopped out pretty early, so yeah, we're all checked in. They were getting off. No. But everything is kicking off here. We have been in Curacao for a few days now and hadn't really seen anything yet, except for the anchorage and the check-in process. So it's time to walk the 15 minutes to the fort which looked over the anchorage. So today we've come to Fort Beaconberg. It's actually behind you, but there is a lovely oil rig. <laughs> Just there. Behind the cactus. And the cactus. So yeah, it's about 3 p.m. but it's about 34 degrees. It's roasting today. But yeah, looking forward to wandering around the fort. It was about time to get off the boat. How does it smell in there, Zach? It smells like piss. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say it some other way. It's like I know you're gonna jump out at me. <laughs> <laughs> I know you were gonna. Oh my god, there's a ladder. Really? Alright. Oh god, it smells really bad. It does. Oh god, now you're gonna to touch the ladder where people have trolled that stuff. I'm gonna hold the sides. <laughs> oh, this is cool, eh? Yeah, they're really cool. This is Fort Beaconberg, named after Nicholas Van Beek, the governor of the town's defence between 1701 and 1704. 
The structure fought off many pirate attacks, as well as many French and English troops who came a knocking. For a while, you couldn't visit it due to the huge oil operation that was happening right by it. But in 2005, Refinery Isla sold it to the government for the symbolic sum of one Netherlands Antillian Gilder, meaning the public could once again wander around it. Interestingly enough, the stones used in the architecture were from the Netherlands, as ships used them for ballast when crossing the ocean, and in return, goods would be loaded back onto the ships to counteract the weight removed. The more you know. So this morning it's 7.30 in the morning and we're at the bus stop. <laughs> Today we're going to take two buses to the north. They only run, the first bus runs every hour but the second bus only runs every I think two and a half hours so we've got to be hot on the timings today. This might be a big adventure. <laughs> so it's eight, it's past eight or something and we decided to get a subway. I we can't remember when we last had one but it was maybe Europe but we missed the bus by seven minutes so we thought we'd treat ourselves instead. Um, so yeah, gonna get a different bus and hopefully hitchhike down from the national park. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> So different to where we've just come from. Yeah, for it's like sure. Like trees here. So we just hopped off the bus, and it was a really random route. We were we went on it for like an hour. There's so many stops. Must so be like many stops. stops. Yeah, but now we're in the middle of nowhere, so yeah. we're gonna head that way and see. Playa Grande. Despite arriving at this beautiful beach, they were using touching turtles as a way to lure tourists in. Kind of stuff that annoys me. Mhm. Mm Really don't believe in ever touching wildlife or promoting it, so we decided to keep walking down the road with the hope at arriving at the next stop, a botanical garden, sometime the same day. <laughs> okay, Zach, tell us about how we got here and what we're at. We uh, got one bus from the Anchorage. Mm -hmm. Well, we took the dinghy, got a bus, got another bus. Uh, stayed one place for a tiny bit, hitchhiked with a really nice Dutch family who dropped us just outside of here, and now we're in. Coffee mango. Coffee mango. Which is... And we're standing next to a really nice Madagascan palm right now. <laughs> and how do I know it's called a Maga Madagascan palm? Because you've got one at home. I do. I have one in my university room which I had was that big and when I left it was like, it was huge. Which his mum's now kindly looking Probably after. killed. <laughs> no. But yeah, I'm glad we didn't have to walk that whole way. We were walking down the road for a little while um, and yeah, it was pretty sweaty but yeah, a lovely family picked us up, which is nice. And now we're in the cactus garden. This place is awesome. I guess it's like a bit of a botanical garden. Um, yeah, we're not quite sure. It only opened last year and we just saw it on Google and it looked and it, interesting. It sounded a little like our kind of place. And when they said, where are you going? We were like, Hoppy Mango. We're like, what on earth is that? And we're like, I'm not too sure, but you can drop us there anyway. It looks really cool. It's kind of getting a bit of the flavour of all the local vegetation. <laughs> You sound like a right nerd. Hello. <laughs> I care about you, Becca. Thanks, Zach. <laughs> You're funny. This is quite simply a hidden gem in the middle of Curacao. Despite most of the island being arid dry, Hoffi Mango is thriving with life due to the natural spring that runs through the centre of it. Not only is it home to the only sugar mill in the Caribbean, but also the only mango trees in the ABC Islands. We couldn't believe we had stumbled across this place. Just entered the mango forest. I can't quite remember when mango season is, so I don't know if we'll see any mangoes. We found some... Unripe mangoes. Very unripe. What have we just got to? 
the Poison Garden. Apparently there's loads of manchineel trees here, which we've talked about in previous videos. But here they call them the Devil's Apples. But we've actually met people on a boat who've eaten these apples before and they ended up in hospital basically. So don't <laughs> eat them. And they were idiots for doing it. <laughs> yeah, nice enough guys, but don't eat apples here in the Caribbean. No. Yeah, you can eat apples from a supermarket, but, but not, not just not just ones that you find growing out in the forest. <laughs> they're probably manchineel apples. Which can kill you. Yeah. We hiked to the top of the hill on site to see the Man de Dios, or Hands of God statue. It gave a great view over Mount Christopher, which is the 375 metre high hill, or as the locals call it, mountain, <laughs> making it the highest point of Curacao. These, which is... What are they called? Lidi Mango, and it's authentic Antillean crusty mango ice, and it's using mangoes from the mango forest here, so yeah, should we go? Give it a go. Yeah, and Maybe that it's... that's coconut on top. It looks like caramelized coconut. Oh my. That's amazing. Good decision by Zach. Mm. It's by you. No, to come here. Yeah. Mm. That's one of the best things I've tasted in the Caribbean. That's so good. Mm. Probably never had one of these before. Next time, I find myself a new boat. <laughs> Kidding. The water in the bilge. And we check out this huge oil rig from below. Till then.